Hi everyone, welcome to Auto Week. In this episode, we look at how grass will help us continue to drive in the future. We take a peek at how a Bentley engine is put together by hand. Find out why rail transport makes sense in a city. Take a look at Porsche's Carrera GTS and Speedster. Volvo's R-Design S60 and V60 station wagon. But before that, a bit of local news. Nazakia has appointed Dato Said Hafiz Abu Bakar as its new Chief Operating Officer. Said Hafiz retired as Managing Director of Perodo at the end of 2009. He had spent five years at the National Car Maker. Said Hafiz led Perodo to new heights. It became the best-selling brand in the country, a position which it still holds till today. He was awarded the Automotive Man of the Year 2009. Said Hafiz is replacing Dato Said Hisham Wazir, who left Nazakia at the end of August to join UMW Holdings Berhad as its President and Chief Executive Officer. The recent announcement by DRB Highcom that it has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Volkswagen to locally assemble VW cars has the market flooded with rumours. Many people are excitedly expecting popular models like the Golf and Passat to fall in price with local assembly. Volkswagen Group Malaysia had to issue a clarification on this matter. It said that the negotiations are still at a very early stage. And anyway, if the local assembly program do actually take off, they are likely to assemble models that are not already on offer. Right, now let's take a look at how grass will help cars to stay on the road in the future. Well, more accurately, we examine how cellulosic biofuels, which can be derived from grass, can sustain our love with cars. Cellulosic ethanol, this is ethanol or a fuel made from grasses, wood chips and so forth, uh, is what's coming on quickly now. Dr. Bruce Dale has spent years researching ways to convert non-food plants like grass into ethanol, which not only works like gas in flex fuel vehicles, it burns much cleaner than petroleum-based gasoline. This is a grass called Miscanthus giganteus, which means really big Chinese silver reed grass. This plant will get about 12 to 15 feet tall at the end of the growing season. It's one of the candidate species for so-called energy crops. In the United States, there are over 7 million flex fuel vehicles and there are nearly 3,085 stations. This is important because you have a choice of an alternative fuel right now. Brazil is a great example of a country that has embraced alternative fuels. Most stations offer regular gas, ethanol, and even natural gas. Chevrolet is the first manufacturer in Brazil to offer a vehicle capable of running on all three. I'm Kendra Wright. This week, we go behind the scenes at Crew. We look at how Bentley put together their engines by hand and meet some of the people who make it possible. The new Mulsanne V8 engine and drivetrain is hand-built at Crew from over 700 individual parts and takes 26 hours to complete. The team consists of 16 engine builders who on average have been building engines for over 16 years. The six and three quarter litre V8 develops 505 brake horsepower and a massive torque of 1,020 newton meters is now delivered even earlier at 1,750 RPM. The new lightweight forged crankshaft with five main bearings is lowered into the crankcase by hand. The eight lightweight pistons are installed by hand into the cylinder block. All of the assembly work on the Bentley Mulsanne V8 is done by hand. This is even down to the application of the individual spherical end caps into the pusher assemblies. To achieve a significant reduction in fuel consumption, a 
and CO2 emissions, the Bentley Mulsanne V8 sees introduction of two new control systems, cam phasing and variable displacement. Engine refinement and smoothness of delivery is absolutely crucial at this stage. Engine balancing is achieved with measurements of less than one gram. Every single engine is run on a dynamometer to ensure that power and torque meet specification. Each of our V8 engines is individually crafted, with every one carrying the name of its builder. Upon completion, the engine, differential, front and rear subframes will now go to the assembly hall to meet the body for the final stages of build. The new Volvo S60 is a good looking car, but there's always room for improvement. What we have here is the R design variant of the S60 sedan and V60 station wagon. Still on Volvo, this time the truck company. A research done in Sweden by this major truck maker shows that simple changes can help transport companies save as much as 15% in fuel. Changes like maintaining correct tyre type and correct tyre pressure. Through relatively simple measures, carbon dioxide emissions from the majority of Europe's truck rigs can be significantly reduced in some cases by nearly 15%. This was proven in a comprehensive test carried out by Volvo Trucks in partnership with the tyre manufacturer Michelin. Studies show that two-thirds of the truck rigs currently on the European roads have the wrong wheels alignment. Having the wrong type of tyres and poor air pressure are also frequent problems. We know that the choice of tyres, the air pressure in the tyre, and the axle alignment gives a big impact and a big difference in the fuel consumption. Reduced fuel consumption reduces carbon dioxide emissions. That's why Volvo Trucks is constantly striving to reduce every milliliter. It's estimated that commercial traffic accounts for between 30 to 40 percent of the carbon dioxide emissions from road transport. As a truck manufacturer, we know that we need to take care of these issues. But how much effect do these factors really have on fuel consumption and, by extension, on carbon dioxide emissions? Over two weeks, extensive tests were conducted at Hallered Proving Ground, Volvo's test circuit in Sweden. The tests included two Volvo FHs, 
each loaded to 40 tons total weight. One truck had optimal wheel alignment, standard tires, and acted as a benchmark. To provide comparative data, the second truck was run with different configurations. The test team experimented with different wheel alignment settings and different tires with various air pressure levels. The total length of testing circuit was more than 1,000 kilometers, with monitoring equipment measuring fuel consumption down to the milliliter. The results show great potential. The two-thirds of truck rigs in Europe that have faulty wheel alignment can reduce their fuel consumption and carbon emissions by 2.5% just through servicing at a workshop. Truck rigs that also have faulty tyres and low air pressure can reduce emissions by nearly 15%. In keeping with the green theme of the week, we take a look at trains. Rail is making a comeback in many cities around the world. Even in the United States where cars rule, trams are coming back in a big way. We look at why rail may be the future of our urban transport. Close to one and a half million Americans hop onto light rail vehicles daily, according to the American Public Transportation Association. These riders aren't just taking cars off the road, they're also reducing carbon emissions by some 20 pounds per person every day. Just part of the reason Atlanta is joining the more than 30 cities that have already jumped aboard the light rail train. What I like about it is it's less expensive than heavy rail and it's less expensive than plowing an expressway through a developed area and it's quicker to build and it also can coexist with other forms of transportation. And finally we take a look at some of the cars that will debut at the Paris Motor Show next week. Chevrolet will show off their new Orlando MPV, the cruise hatchback, the facelifted Captiva and the new Avio. Meanwhile, Porsche is uh, playing some videos of their Carrera GTS and Speedster. That's all for this week. Don't forget to come again next week uh, to watch our live coverage of the Paris Motor Show. We take a look at the fourth generation Mitsubishi Pajero and a facelifted uh, Toyota Corolla Altis. See you again.